Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed products. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green land destruction deck titled Troll Tribal, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a ramp deck built around the 6-mana rare saga from Kaldheim, Waking the Trolls, which on the first chapter destroys target land. On the second chapter we can put target land card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, and on the final chapter we can choose an opponent, and if they control fewer lands than we do, we get to make a number of 4-4 green troll warrior creature tokens with trample equal to the difference. So not only do we get faster access to Waking the Trolls if we ramp into it, but we also get to put additional lands in play, which will make an even greater difference between the lands we control and the ones our opponent controls, giving us access to even more troll tokens. So that's the main game plan of the deck, try and get to our waking the trolls as quickly as possible, hopefully even casting multiple copies. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck at 2 mana. We've got a full play set of Lotus Cobra, doesn't put any additional lands in play but with the landfall ability it does synergize quite nicely with other ramp cards that do put extra lands in play, as we'll be able to spend that mana on other activated abilities or casting multiple spells in the same turn. Then we've got two copies of Wolf Willow Haven, which also doesn't put any extra lands in play, but does make it more reliable for us to cast our various 4-mana ramp cards on turn 3, so that also speeds up the deck significantly. And then the full play set of Maze Mind Tome, we get to use the Scry ability early on without having to spend any extra mana, just to make sure we keep hitting our land drops and have a smooth curve, and then in the late game we can spend the mana to draw extra cards and eventually gain 4 life. And then the full play set of Shatter Skull Smashing can play it as a land if needed, and then in the late game can be a nice removal spell, potentially killing up to two creatures and or planeswalkers. Then at three mana, another staple in any red deck in standard, Bone Crusher Giant, can use the Adventure Stomp first, dealing two damage anywhere, and then a 4-3 creature afterwards, so this is great against any opposing aggro decks. And then the full play set of Cultivate as one of the more exciting ramp spells. Get to search for two lands, one of them goes onto the battlefield tapped, the other one goes into our hand. So this is a great way to put extra lands in play for waking the trolls. And then we've got a one-off copy of Arada, Heart of Keld, which lets us play lands over the top, so that's potentially a nice source of card advantage as well. And then the activated ability also threatens a ton of damage if we have a lot of lands in play. And then Asvela, Ice Shaper, another troll, so fits nicely into our troll tribal deck, can spend 3 mana and tap Asvela to make a mana list token, which can be used to add more mana. And then at 8 mana we can tap Asvela and look at the top 4 cards of our library, and we can cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost, so that's another way to potentially find or waking the trolls. And then at 4 mana we've got more ramp cards, with two copies of Migration Path, which can also be cycled for 2 mana if we have all the lands we need, and otherwise we get to search for two basic lands to put on the battlefield tapped. And Vastwood Surge also searches for two lands tapped, but we can also kick it for four additional mana. So for eight mana total, we get to search two lands, and then we get to put two plus one plus one counters on each creature we control. So this can also be a great follow up to the final chapter of Waking the Trolls if we get to put two plus one plus one counters on each trampling troll token. And then we've got the full set of Goldspan Dragon, another new addition from Kaldheim, a 4 4 flying dragon with haste that whenever it attacks or becomes the target of a spell, it gets to make a treasure token, and then as long as it dragons in play we get to sacrifice our treasure tokens for double the mana, so another way to generate extra mana to help us ramp, and a nice threat that can help us end the game as well. And then in our mana base, also very important, the full playset of a not fault slumber mound, which can also be activated to destroy an opposing land and generate a 4-4 troll warrior token with trample. So that can also be activated at instant speed, so we can potentially make a troll token end of turn, or use it to ambush an opposing creature if the opponent's not paying attention. And then also the full place at a Fabled Passage as a way to enable landfall twice for Lotus Cobra, as well as 14 fetchable basic lands to search up with our various ramp cards. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is a little sketchy if we don't find green mana right away, but if we can find a green source by turn 2, so we've got two draw steps to find one, then turn 2 Cobra into turn 3 Vastwood Surge is an incredible start. So I'm gonna try it. Alright, a triple gold span. So our late game is taken care of. Question is, can we find green mana next turn? We've got 10 untapped forests we can draw. Not playing any pathways in this deck just because we want all the basic lands we can get. But 
but a Fable Passage would still be a decent draw. Alright, opponent's also ramping. Alright, there's my green mana. Better late than never. So next turn we could already play a gold span. And if the snake dies, we get to Vastwood Surge instead. Another Cultivate. So waking the trolls is not gonna be incredibly effective against other ramp decks. Alright, I guess it's time for a gold span dragon. If I vast with surge, I get to search two more lands. It's not enough for a gold span dragon, but maybe it's still worth it here. And then we'll just play a bone crusher. Might see ultimatum from our opponents, which might put something scary in play, although I guess they need triple blue and double red, so too many forests for Genesis ultimatum here. Right, just a hard cast Shark Typhoon, fair enough. So we'll make some mana. And then a question is... What can I cast here? If I play Goldspan... I get to attack, play another Goldspan. But I might be better off... Just going... Kicked Vast with Surge... 5, 6, 7, 8... That would hit for lots. Or I can just normal Vast with Surge and still play Goldspan. Could also activate the Slumber Mount, so we do have a lot of options here. Slumber Mount would help me prevent a Genesis Ultimatum. So there's something to be said for that. So what if we Vast with Surge and then use the Slumber Mound? Yeah, sure. And that might slow them down, and then we still have all these gold span dragons to maybe get across the finish line. Into the royal kicked, bouncing the troll token. Fair enough. So we get to gold span, attack with all, play another gold span. Or I can save it for next turn. So next turn I could play a gold span for 5 mana. And then this will make double mana so I can double gold span next turn. So I think we will just maze mine tome here. On the off chance that my opponent goes Ugin with a minus 5. That way we're guaranteed to still kill them. Alright, they did have Genesis ultimatum. So opponent makes a 7-7 seven, seven shark. And does not hit any permanents, apparently. So the first Slumber Mound activation was enough to prevent the Genesis Ultimatum for a turn. Could have activated it a second time, although I was pretty happy with the different line of play. So... Let's see what our opponent does. They have to discard to hand size, discards island. So we'll just double gold span here. They might have another stomp which makes a 2-2 shark. Although you would imagine they would have killed Lotus Cobra by now if they did. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with 
a reasonable hand, especially if we can find an untapped land here. Forest would be ideal. Another Cobra. Yeah, I guess we'll play the Slumber Mound here. I guess if I draw Basic Mountain, Fabled Passage for Forest is better, but we only have four mountains in the deck. So I think the upside of keeping Passage until after Cobras may be better, and then hopefully we'll just draw a Forest. Facing a Zerda deck, cycling a Footfall Crater, so maybe a cycling deck, who knows. Drenith Healer. Alright, not a Fabled Passage. So no turn to Cobra, sadly. Flourishing Fox. We would love to stomp before it's too late, but if they have two cycling cards, it's gonna grow up to a 3 3. Alright, looks like they might not have a third land, so there's still hope for us to stomp the fox. So we get to play Cobra, and then I can play a Passage, Fetch, and then have two mana for Stomp. Or we can just wait on Cobra and just stomp and play a tap land and then next turn passage will be untapped. Yeah, that might be better. So I get to play Cobra, passage, make mana, fetch, make another mana. So we'll have four total, so I can then play Migration Path. Or we could play Cobra before fetching. So we've got a few options here. So our opponent needs to hit their land drops. It's now cycling to find those. And still no third land. Alright, so I can go Cobra. Passage make a green. And then probably play another Cobra. This can fetch four forests. And then we'll have three mana essentially. Which is enough for a Cultivate. That seems good. And then play Haven. And you know what? We could even start activating our Slumber Mound next turn, which is pretty mean against an opponent who's stuck on two lanes, but we are a land destruction deck after all. So one of the advantages of playing Zerdan's Companion as opposed to Lurus is that you get to play some of the more expensive cycling creatures like the Ventasaur. Alright, finally your opponent finds a third land. Although, for how long will they keep that third land as a question? Let's do some math. So let's say we play Mountain. Add some mana. If I were to Migration Path, we get two extra lands, two extra landfall triggers. So I can still activate Slumber Mound. Yeah, that seems good. If I play Goldspan Dragon, then... Treasure token. I'm gonna be one mana short of activating it, I believe. So we'll wait on the dragon. Take out whites. And we'll attack if they want to trade, that's fine by me. And next turn we get to do it again. Put on cycles twice more. And 
and still no white mana. But by destroying an extra land, we can keep them off a Zenith Flare, which is the card we're most scared of. So I get to play Goldspan. And then we'll attack and then play Smashing as a land to give me access to the mana to activate Slumber Mount here. And our opponent explodes. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Double Haven for some early ramp into Goldspan and then Zvela as a nice mana sink. So we'll have to fetch a basic forest here to guarantee turn to Haven. I'll just do it now. Picked up Rada, so we've got our two legendary one-offs. So next turn I could play Haven, and then still play a 3-drop afterwards. Ooh, Waking the Trolls, I like that. Could also play Rada first, but then we can't Haven afterwards. So I think the play is Haven into Rada, and that will make it more likely for me to hit my land drop next turn to play Waking the Trolls. Ah, migration Path on top. Hopefully there's a land following the Migration Path. Opponent foretold a card here, could be a counter spell. Could also just play Gold Span here, we'll see. Right, opponent passes, land on top. So if my opponent has a counter spell, which card do we want him to counter? I don't get to double spell, sadly. I mean, playing Waking the Trolls right now would be pretty great if it resolves, although it's just not very likely to. I think I'm still going to go for it just because it uses up all my mana. And then next turn I can maybe double spell, even though it means shuffling away at the Goldspan Dragon here. Alright, opponent cycle Shark Typhoon for one. So, I guess they must not have a counterspell then. So now we get to resolve our saga. So that's awesome. And I think we'll still go for the blue mana here. Make it more difficult for the opponent to leverage any potential counterspells. And Migration Path is going to be awesome with Waking the Trolls giving us two extra lands and our opponent explodes. So yeah, they needed a counterspell but didn't have one. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice hand. Now, we would really like to draw a third land here to go with our Lotus Cobra. I should probably just play the Passage right away, get my Mountain and then play turn 2 Cobra, hope a third land shows up so we can start ramping. Potentially even a turn 3 Vass would surge. Alright, no land yet. Let's see if the Cobra survives. If it doesn't, we can still draw land and cultivate, which would be fine. I would set up a turn 4 Goldspan Dragon. Eh, Sprite Dragon from our opponents, and we found a land awesome. So let's Surge. And that also lets us stomp afterwards. So far so good. Next turn with the land we get to wake the trolls, if not, we can do some other powerful things. Shatter Skull Smashing for one, that's fine. Alright, so let's just Gold Spend then. 
And then next turn we can maybe wave the trolls or play a second gold span. If two gold spans attack, we'll have six mana and we can still wake the trolls second main phase. Cathartic Reunion discards Blitz, so that's a way they have to potentially cheaply kill our dragon. Storming Entity, alright, 3-3 three, three gets to scry too, but we get to enact our game plan here. Double gold span, hit for eight, and wake the trolls. And our opponent concedes before we get to destroy our land. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a potentially quite powerful hand. Especially if Cobra survives and we find a third land here. And then we still have Maze Mind Tome as kind of a fail case to help us find a third land. And then we're off to the races. Tome also good mana sink if we're left with a bunch of mana. Alright, so Smashing will give me a third land to potentially Vaxwood Surge if Cobra survives. If not, we get to Cultivate and play a turn 4 Gold Span. Opponent also has their own Cobra. But, uh... I think they can keep it. And now I'm fine trading Cobras since we made use of ours. Scry towards waking the trolls, maybe. Their opponent on a Junt variant. Alright, they've got the Saga, that's a good one. Let's see what they destroy, Cobra. Sure. Don't think we need an extra land at this point. Second so Scry, maybe find a Bone Crusher Giant to kill their Cobra. Don't need a third tomb. Alright, so in this case, gold span attack seems fine. Can't activate Slumber Mound just yet. And then I think I'll cultivate now with the extra mana from gold span as opposed to play tomb. Alright, so we're on the board. We've got double tomb for card advantage. Can still activate a Slumber Mount to maybe take the opponent off a Caller for a turn. Second Binding. Also a good answer to Dragon since it doesn't actually give us a Treasure Token afterwards. Alright, so our opponents had some good answers. I can draw, I can Scry. Question is whether or not we want to activate Slumber Mount here. Opponent will get to search another land, but it's tapped, so we can maybe delay an expensive card for a turn, which might be worth it. In which case I'll just cry. If we find, like, a Waking the Trolls, I can keep it. Fast switch Surge instead. Yeah, let's just kill a land, and then... These are black-green. Probably go for Temple of Malice. First, good one mana answer for the token. And Clothus. Fair enough. Alright, maybe should have scribed an upkeep. Can uh, draw now with Tomb. Smashing can kill Cobra. Is it still worth it? 
opponent can make more mana with Clothis. It feels like they have all the mana they need. So killing Cobra might not necessarily be a priority. So instead we can keep ramping with Haven and Surge and then next turn start leveraging Tome. And we've got Smashing as removal. Or I can Tome, play Haven and draw. I guess I don't really need access to more mana with Surge. So I guess Haven, Tome and draw is better. And we'll pass. Gold span is gone. Rada, all right. So next turn we can maybe smashing, killing Rada and Cobra. So we'll get to draw a card. So I need to smashing for X equals four, which is six mana total. So three, four, five, six. So I'll still get to draw with Tomb. Ooh, gold span. Although I think we need to take care of the creatures first, since we're getting pretty low on life. And then we'll just play Cobra, I think. Alternatively, we could have drawn with Tome first, and then if we draw land, Cobra, land, and then smashing. We're at seven. Right, second Rada. Plays a land over the top, and a Bone Crusher. Right, need to find some more action. Mm, that might be too slow. We're at seven. Yeah, I'm afraid that's probably not gonna cut it. I mean, I can keep gold span on defense. Maybe it's still good enough. It is a way for us to potentially go over the top, although it's gonna take a few turns to get there. And in the meantime, we're kind of dying on the board. It might still be one of the better way out. Another smashing could be good. Yeah, let's bottom it. And then I think I scry again. In the hopes of finding smashing. Alright, we got there. So... Smashing for six, so that's all my mana. I guess we get to deal more than six damage here. I am dead to a top decked gold span dragon but there's not much I can do about it. All right, just a Lotus Cobra that we can maybe beat. So now I'll take my draw step since we might draw with Tome. So thin out the deck first. Get to gain four. Alright, so gold span can attack. Might want to keep search to play kicked. And then four mana, five, six after I attack with gold span. I guess I can cycle migration path now. And then gold span attack. Probably keeping Cobra on defense. 
And then next turn we can think about a kicked Vastwood Surge. Ooh, Tybalt. Yeah, that's bad. Steals my gold Spain. And that's probably game over. If I take it, I fall to three. I can kill Tybalt, but we still need to deal with a gold Span dragon here, which is probably not going to happen. Sure, we'll take it. Another vice would surge. Can sacrifice the Wolf Willow Haven token. Four, five, six, seven. Not enough to play Kicked Surge, which is sad. But yeah, we're just dead to the goal span, so it doesn't matter what we do. Alright, close game, but yeah. Top deck battles, as the name implies, comes down to top decks. And our opponent got the best of us here. You know what? I've had Jeez. Wish we could have kept waking the trolls, but yeah, we were a little bit too far behind on board at the time. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. We're missing actual ramp cards, but Rad and Zvela are pseudo ramp. So still okay keeping. And yeah, once again, we drew both one of legendary. So that's why I prefer having one of each instead of two of the same. Probably play Rada first. Try and get our value. Yeah, I'm guaranteed to play goal span on five. Opponent on black green. All right, opponent's ramping. So again, not the best matchup for waking the trolls if our opponent's playing cultivate. Looks like a five color deck. Maybe a Sanctum deck. Alright, Waking the Trolls is going to show up next turn. Triad of Legion Grove can also fix the opponent's mana. And a Garrick unleashed. Alright, gold span a nice answer here. Don't think we have any other amazing attacks. I guess never mind. I could have, if I wanted to, attacked with Rada and then stomped Dryad if they blocked, because of first strike. But keeping our treasures could also be good. Kaya. Alright, I guess now we'll stomp. Kill Kaya. And then we can waking the trolls. The Wolf Willow Haven land. Which is kind of like destroying two lands at once. Right, opponent's doing the path to the world tree. Could attack first and then kind of force them to respect the activated ability on Rada, but I would much rather just get this in play.
Symbiosis finds a Sika. So that's their big finisher here, the Prismatic Bridge. Get the opponent's lane back. Or we can get Fabled Passage. Uh, I'm happy getting their forest. And then we can play this for free, or we can play Slumber Mount. Eh, get our free value. Seems better. Already have a Slumber Mount we can activate if we so desire. And then... We could also activate Zvella. Or we can get another Gold Span in play. Gold Span, attack. Don't quite have enough to activate Rada, so Rada doesn't get to attack here. What we can do, however, is in our upkeep, activate Zvella to cast a free Vastut Search to make more trolls. So I kind of like that idea. And then I can play Bone Crusher, or I can activate Zvella to make a token, which I think is better. Just give us more mana. Opponent's got one card in hand. They can probably sacrifice Path here if they want. Alright, so two damage to Rada. Take four. And then before our draw step, activates Vela to be guaranteed hitting a ramp spell. And... I mean, an author waking the troll sounds pretty good too, to be honest. And destroy. I guess we'll go with. I mean, it doesn't matter as long as Dryad's in play. Get to attack. And play another gold span, perhaps. Or we can keep it in hand if we fear a sweeper. Just play it to him. So, got two trolls, but next turn we'll get some more. And we can once again maybe activate Zvella. Our opponent found their prismatic bridge. Could also scry with Tome to make it more likely that we find another ramp card here. Alright, Cultivate will do. Another Waking the Trolls. Alright, many trolls are being awoken. Or I can play another gold span. Now let's wake more trolls. This is more fun. Now we get to smash. I'll keep the Bone Crusher Giant in hand. Again, might as well play around a sweeper when we're this far ahead on board. So our opponent has had to pay the troll toll this game with triple waking the trolls. Liliana. 
so they've got some nice planeswalkers in there, but yeah, opponent's still too far behind and explodes. So her red green control able to beat five color prismatic bridge. All right, so we got to destroy a lot of lands today, which makes me happy. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.